Okay, Harvey was a six-foot rabbit. Everybody who has followed Jimmy Stewart's career probably knows that. The big difference between Maggie Blates and everybody is that Maggie got here. She was the first call uh, with the correct answer. Jimmy Stewart's birthday, Harvey was his friend, and he was a six-foot rabbit. Did he really exist? Ah, that was the story. Maggie, you get a chance to go to a terrific, terrific circus. I'm telling you, these European circus performers. Of course, they don't really do that well with magic. That's one of the reasons why it is that we invited Kirby Romine here, an illusionist, a magician, and obviously a man who likes to bring his pets <laughs> to uh, the television station. And uh, now, can, yes, they can see that with that sure, shot, sure. right? Yeah. The, the purpose, purpose of this, Kirby? Well, uh, this is my pet canary, Harry. And I named him Harry after the great magician Harry Blackstone. Because uh, my bird has been known to disappear, to vanish right before my very eyes. But Pat, the problem is I never know when to expect it which well, is the case with most magic. Yeah, I certainly hope it happens sometime before we run out of time. <laughs> it does. It happens right when you least expect it, like that. Well, <laughs> Cajun all that time. <laughs> How does he do it? I mean, it is, uh, I don't, it's a phrase that has followed you ever since you were how old? Um, I started when I was six years old. Why? Well, I saw my brother perform a simple magic trick that he got from a box of cereal. And from that moment on, I knew that's what I wanted to do. Really? Absolutely. I've I mean, never yeah, wavered. A lot of guys that are six years old, they want to be firemen or they want to be a cowboy. So they want to be, uh, they want to be seafood chefs like the fellow that's coming up in right, just right. a few minutes. But the idea of saying, I want to be a magician and then continuing to do that, what, did you send away for tricks? I, I did. I begged my parents for a magic kit, which I got for my birthday, and performed my first magic show for my family, again, when I was about six or seven years old. I've just studied it. I read every book I could get my hands on, uh, performed for my school, and it's just been a passion of mine since, really, since I can remember. Yeah, see, if, if your parents had probably known then what they know now, they would have bought you a book on investment banking or something like that. A law book or a medical book, of course. Uh, okay, now, what you did just then, is that called close-up magic? Um, well, we did it up close, but it's really stage magic. That, that's part of my act that I do on stage. Mm -hmm. um, after I make Harry disappear, I go back and I get his brother Pete. I have two canaries. And I come back out with Pete, and I allow members of the audience to come up on stage with me. Usually, if there's children, I'll have children come up. And they can put their hands on the cage, on the front, on the back, on the sides, the top and bottom. We cover the cage completely with their hands. And yet, Pete manages to disappear every night. Do you know that one of my absolute fondest and most vivid memories is being on stage, I don't know, I was three or four years old, with Blackstone. Oh, wow. Blackstone Sr. Yes, wow. Amazing. And Harry Blackstone Jr. has been on the show a lot. But, uh, but, uh, but Blackstone, this incredible, legendary, and I got to do one of those tricks, uh, and this was the hands-on with the rabbit and where did he go. You Is know, that right? Looking under the tails wow. and so on. Wow, amazing. And he said, one of these days, you're going to be doing a talk show talking to Kirby Roma <laughs> in Phoenix, Arizona, and so I am. Um, with people right now who are interested in doing magic themselves, maybe they aren't six. Right, right. Maybe they're grown-ups and they want to know, is it too late to start, and how do you? Well, it's never too late to start. Um, there are a number of ways to get involved in magic, but we have a club, an organization called the International Brotherhood of Magicians, which is really a worldwide organization. Um, it made up of uh, people who have an interest in magic as a hobby, all the way to internationally known professional magicians like Blackstone Jr., uh, uh, who was a member of David Copperfield and Siegfried Roy. But you can be an amateur? A hobby? Uh, well, yeah, absolutely. The, the Phoenix uh, Ring, or the, the chapter of this organization, was, uh, was founded in 1947. And all of the original members have since passed Herbie away. Beasley. Yes, Herbeasley. No, Herbeasley Herb has the fun the job shop. now. And his dad. Herb Easley, his dad. Legendary magician. Absolutely. Yes. Just a really good guy for those of us who remember him. Uh, the, the, uh, the International Federation of the Local Ring has a big event coming up. On Monday night, our 57th annual banquet, which will be held at the Broadway Palm Dinner Theater. We've rented out the facility, so they'll provide the food and the setting, and we've brought in the talent. Um, it is open to the public. It is our banquet, um, but we enjoy performing magic for everybody, so the public is welcome to attend this event. It would seem to me that if you have a theater full of magicians, <laughs> that it would be an evening of entertainment that it would never yes. end. 
and everybody's going to be doing different kinds of magic. Will there be people strolling uh, by the tables doing close-up card magic? We'll have both close-up magic and stage magic. We have three great acts lined up, um, which will start at 8. The dinner will start around 7.30, and the, and the big show will start at 8. So everybody's invited, and I know that they are because you said so, and there would be no reason to have that phone number and that website up. You get a chance to go, listen, even if you have a casual passing interest in magic as a consumer of entertainment or perhaps as a hobbyist, maybe you're a pro. What a great evening it's going to be Monday. What time? Um, 7.30. If I show up at 7.15 when I see people doing their tricks and putting them together and preparing them. How do you feel about those revelation shows where a guy with a mask comes out and blows it for the 875,000 practicing magicians? <laughs> it's terrible. It's, 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 it's terrible, but what are you going to do? I think it forces magicians to go back and think of new ways to perform new illusions. So in a way, it kind of forces us to, uh, to improve ourselves. And it may force you into finding that guy with the mask <laughs> and working him over in the yes, alley. Right. You know what the vast majority of people say? How did he do that? I can't figure that out. They don't want to know. That's Because why after it. it's over, after you've seen it, then you can't ever appreciate that trick again. Listen, I have just a little, a little skill with uh, sleight of hand. Uh, because within the next 12 seconds, I'm going to make Kirby Romine disappear. And in his place will be a guy who's going to teach you the most mystical, magical thing of all, how you can prepare fish that the whole family is going to really enjoy. It's coming up now. Sim Sullivan.